Hello, I'm JW. Uh, today we've got a couple of items that have been sent in. Uh, these are from the Chipmunk 2008. And I've got a selection of some old cables here, which we may have a look at at a later time. Some uh, more unusual varieties there. And uh, we've also got this uh, interesting assembly, which uh, is a section of wire here with a variety of connectors on it. Now I've got here is a section of uh, insulated wire. This is uh, 1.5 square millimetres. And there's just two different colours there, doesn't actually matter for the purposes of this. And uh, what we've got along here are a selection of different connectors. So uh, first of all here we've got the fairly typical, certainly for the UK, this sort of screw connector there. So it's just a plastic block with a brass piece inside, two screws clamped down onto the wire. And those are very common in the UK, probably the most uh, common type out of the four things we've got here. And uh, then we've got one of these things, which is one of these Wago connectors. And these are a more recent uh, thing you can get now. And essentially these just strip the wire, shove it into the connector there. And it's also transparent so you can see through when the wire's inserted properly. And these are supposed to be maintenance free, as in they won't ever come loose as there's a spring type of connection metal piece inside. And you can also uh, put a testing probe in the end here to confirm that the uh, wires are connected to whatever they're supposed to be connected to. Now uh, these things you can remove the wires from basically by twisting and pulling out and as you see here that the uh, thing itself does actually quite freely move around inside the connector but these are supposed to be rated for this size of wire so again shouldn't be a problem. Then we have a crimp connector here this is a uh, butt crimp so basically the two wires just shove in and it's crimped down there with the appropriate tool. Now in this case the uh, Notes came with this said this was crimped down with a £6.99 eBay special ratchet crimper. So not quite as the bad uh, as the Press and Hope variety, but certainly at the uh, lower end of the uh, tooling requirement. So there's the uh, crimp there. And then finally at the end here we have one of these things, which is one of these uh, wing nuts as it says on there, or wire nut things, where you basically just put the two wires together, screw this thing on the end, and it uh, allegedly holds the wires together securely. Now these things are not common in the UK, although they are available. Certainly they were common in the past, certainly it was the 1960s you could get ceramic versions of these, but uh, fell out of favour quite a lot there. And it's only recently they've only been able to get these uh, plastic versions here with the metal insert inside. But these are quite commonly used in other countries, certainly the United States, these are fairly well used, and the other things are not. So uh, the question with, with all this then is that uh, when excessive amounts of current are shoved through the wire, which one of these connectors is going to fail first? Or is it in fact going to be the wire going to be failing first before any of the connectors? So we've got a choice between wing nut, chock block type connector, crimp or the Wago. So the only way to find out is to take this outside and connect a substantial amount of current to this and basically turn it on and see what melts or sets on fire. So outside now and uh, it's fairly straightforward here. I've just got the clamp meter at the left side which will show the current in amps. And then the uh, wire there just connects onto the end of the uh, test piece there and just goes through all of the four connectors and then returns to the other fitting at the bottom left. So what we'll need to do is just connect that up and uh, shove some current through there. So just clip onto the exposed end of the wire there. And uh, current initially there, looking in the region sort of 12 and a half amps or so. Now this is well within the current rating of this particular wire. I'll say this is 1.5 square millimetres, so this shouldn't uh, pose any problem whatsoever. And sure enough, as you see, it's just sitting there, pretty much doing nothing at all. So we'll disconnect there and uh, we'll change the settings so we can put uh, somewhat more current through. So this time we're in the region of uh, just under 37 amps there, or 36.7. Now this is actually uh, over the rating for this particular wire, so we would expect it to get rather hot. So we'll leave this on again for a short time and see what happens. So this has been on for a couple of minutes now, and see the current still around that sort of 36, 37 amp area. But uh, as you see the wires haven't changed or anything's happened, so just disconnect the uh, supply there and uh, see what sort of temperature the thing is at. Now the wires are hot, but uh, you wouldn't certainly call them that sort of burning temperature, and so it's quite easy to actually hold the wires there. So although that was a significant overload, it still hasn't actually caused any damage. So uh, we'll turn the current even more, and of course uh, reconnect, and see what happens this time. Now current here was running at about 71 amps, 
So this is significantly more than we had previously and fairly likely that things are going to start to melt and destroy themselves. So as before we'll leave this going for a while and we'll see what happens. Now we can see that smoke is starting to come off of the wire as the insulation starts to melt and break down and the current's still around that sort of 70-71 sort of area. And you see that uh, various bits of the insulation are obviously now melting, uh, of course uh, deteriorating and falling away from the wires. However the current is still remaining at about the constant level so none of the connectors have actually failed or started to break down in any way. And now as the cable gets to a high temperature you see the amount of smoke coming off has increased dramatically. So again we'll leave this running and see what happens and come back in a few minutes time. So this is about one minute later and you'll see that most of the installation has charred and turned black and various bits have disappeared completely. And we're still getting a certain amount of smoke from that but most of the smoke now is coming from the Wago connector as we see over towards the right hand side of the picture there. And we're also getting a smaller amount from that so wire nut thing which is towards the back of the centre there. So uh, still working though, I mean the current's still around the 70 amps mark so nothing has really changed there and so the smoke continues to uh, pour off in various places. This is after another three minutes and a similar situation, the amount of smoke has reduced but we're still getting a bit of smoke from the Wago connector and you see at the front uh, in the middle there there's also some coming from that sort of chock block type connector as well which is and basically it's where the plastic is melting and uh, just burning away. But say so the current's still around the same level, uh, slightly reduced possibly to a uh, marginally higher resistance but 69.5 amps still going through there, no problem at all. Now this is another minute gone so I think we'll just disconnect the uh, power for a moment and then we'll uh, go in and have a closer look and see what state these connectors are in. And bearing in mind nothing has actually completely failed yet it's uh, still casting the current no problem at all at the 70 odd amps level. So here's the wire there and you see the insulation is basically just charred and uh, broken away. This is the chock block connector and although the plastic is melted off of course the metal connector part is still intact. And there's some more damaged wire. That's the Wago connector and again the plastic is pretty much gone but the metal clip piece in the middle is still intact as are the two wires going in. So uh, that's that one. And then just come around here, that's the crimp there. And again, the plastic is melted away mostly, but the metal part, just that tube piece, is still attached to the wires as before. And then finally, we've got the wire nut thing, and uh, pretty much the same story. The plastic has melted away, but the metal cone spray spring there is, of course, uh, still in place. So uh, all of those connectors seem to be uh, still electrically connected even though the plastic coverings have melted away and disappeared. Now I've turned up the current settings uh, once more so even more current can be shoved through the wire. So we'll just uh, connect up the power again and uh, see what happens this time. So the current now is around 90 amps so that's a 20 odd amp increase from what we had previously. And again you notice it's passing the current uh, no particular problem there. And as the wire heats up again we should see the smoke things just coming off of there. So this is approximately one minute later and you see a fair amount of smoke's coming off and we also have some flames where the uh, Wago connector is over on the right. Current has dropped a bit to about 87 amps so uh, a bit less than we had before and the wire's actually now glowing red hot. Now that pop there was actually the failing point which uh, appeared to be over there by the Wago connector and you see the current has now dropped away to zero so that's uh, certainly a failure. So let's have a go and have a look and see what's actually broken. So here's the remains of it and you see the insulation is uh, completely destroyed here. It just chips off as uh, ash basically. Here is the uh, chop block connector and say so the plastic is gone but the metal part as you see is still intact. Here's the brake here over by the Wago connector. But you see it's not actually the connectors failed, it's actually the wire has broken a short distance away from that. I've just inadvertently reconnected it there. So uh, the wires are still in the connector there as you see both of them in that metal clip but the actual wire has broken uh, further down towards the end so although that's where the failure is it's not the connector itself it's purely the wire. may have had a uh, slightly thinner point there or something. Here's the butt crimp and again plastic's gone but the metal part still firmly attached there and uh, I believe that was done with a cheap uh, £6.99 eBay thing. 
And then finally the wire nut here. So as before really the plastic is gone but the wire is certainly uh, still connected into the uh, spring part and certainly no uh, issues with connectivity there. So as we saw there then the uh, wire was actually the thing that failed although it did fail uh, close to that uh, Wago connector. The connector itself didn't actually break and all of the other things also remained intact although the plastic of course did burn away. Bearing in mind we were shoving 90 amps through there and uh, most of these connectors are only rated in the sort of region of 20 amps or so. And until next time, thanks for watching.